Loving, loving Sairam, Sundaram Kumar, welcome on behalf of the Sri Satya Sai Global Council. Welcome to the series, Awake, Unite and Inspire. We are very happy, we are privileged and honored that you have taken the time to share your personal journey with Mother Sai. Please share with us. How did you first come into contact with Sri Satya Sai Baba? Om Sri Sai Ram, offering my humble salutations at the Divine Lotus Feet. I want to thank Swami and the organizers to have given me this opportunity to connect with my Sai in during my journey and my thoughts in the process. Um, first of all. I must mention to you that I was born in a Sai family. So Swami was there in the family even before I was born. Swami entered the family through my grandmother, my mother's mother, who used to be living in Madurai. And in Madurai, my grandfather was working for the Subramanya, uh, the Chetiyar, who used to do all the Paduka pujas and who used to, who brought the silver door on the Prashantanilayam. So that particular silver gold making uh, organization was actually belonging to the Chetiyara and to whom my grandfather was working. And that is how when Swami visited his house in Madurai, my grandmother got the exposure to be with Swami. Since then, there was no looking back for my grandmother. However, my father, when he got married and uh, was attending to one of the functions in his in-law's house, he was observing a weird behavior of my grandmother doing everything as a naivedyam, which is offering to Swami including even starting with coffee. So my father was really uh, kind of uh, looking, feeling that it was totally weird to even offer coffee to Swami. And he kept looking at all this behavior and said, maybe this is something very odd. And then uh, you know, days went by, my, my mother came back with my dad. And then when he went back, to one of those functions, he, she said, Sai Baba has agreed to perform their 60th birthday and he is going to give an interview. Who doesn't want an interview from Sai Baba? Whether they, you know them or not, my father was super excited and the whole family went to Puttaparthi in the 60s and they had to take so many vehicles to go uh, to the uh, you know to the function and then swami gave them an interview and swami spoke to all of them while doing their 60th birthday ceremony which is sashti purti in indian terms so he observed the whole process 
and he saw what amount of discipline is there in puttaparthi and he was impressed that doesn't mean he was a sai devotee but when i was born i had a lot of health issues i was a late born into the child my uh, my sisters are older to me by 11 13 years and my brother is 10 years and so i was like a late born in in the family and so uh, i was having lots of health issues and i would really struggle and then suddenly one of those days uh, a snake came into our house and then sat down on the harmonium and then took a hood and then you know he just happened to read so many other literature of swami that how swami was born whenever he was born the snakes appeared the mridangam you know played on its own so all those things he felt as though that's a sign of swami showing that i am there to take care of him and that is how i became came back alive because i was really serious in health and since then my star, father started behave, believing in swami and that is how the journey began and it was a blessing from swami that i am in a sai family very very intriguing uh, s kumar that very uh, intriguing entity and entrance by such a sai baba into your life but tell me tell us uh, at what age did you first see such a sai baba physically and what was that feeling inside like absolutely thank you for asking this question uh, since the time of the early 60s though uh, my parents became devotees they could not go to puttaparthi until 1969 because you know uh, i was too little of a child and i was having a lot of health issues so in, when i was like one I, i was in 6 6 years old 7 years old i don't remember in the 1970 in the year of 1969 my father went alone and came back but 1970 71 at that time i was able to walk on my own and then listen to bhajans and i could sing even at the age of 3 i could sing this bhajan रक्ष रक्ष जगदीश्वरा फर्तीपुरी परमेश्वरा पाही पाही परमेश्वरा पाही पाही परमेश्वरा देहि देहि तव पद सेवा देहि देहि तव पद सेवा माय फादर इज टू से i used to sing bhajan from the age of 3 and i do not know about it but when i went in the at the around 6 years old i think i went to puttaparthi i do remember those days in early 70 71 we had only the uh, you know the uh, thatched roof purnachandra where you know it was not even asbestos it was just a thatched roof kind of thing and then sands used to be there inside purnachandra auditorium any family used to come and sit inside the uh, you know kind of uh, you know spread all their wings with all their belongings and food items to cook inside the punishandra auditorium so those little things i remember and wherever we cook and eat we'll just sit down for darshan swami would come and those days i ha- i remember listening to vijayamma and dr raja reddy singing in punachandra and then swami used to come give darshan and inquire to each family how hello unnaru how are you what are you doing kind of a thing so i remember that much but also i do remember when suprabhatam used to happen once i was having a monkey kula and then my father was taking me inside he said no 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 children allowed since then no children allowed inside the mandir so they told my father to take my myself and himself away and we came out and father was feeling so bad i remember that incident so but on the whole what i remember was finally before leaving guru purnima or shivratri i don't remember whichever function it was um, swami gave uh, amritam those days swami used to give amritam to everybody so i i also got amritam from swami and i drank it and then i remember that 
incident with me that i remember looking at swami so close because it's a unique taste and unique vision in a unique place very very beautiful and wonderful sharing uh, s kumar thank you so you have spent a number of years in your schooling years your student years in the immediate physical presence of our wonderful lord swami and i know you've had many wonderful divine moments with him but can you share two of your most memorable ones with us absolutely it's a, it's a pleasure to uh, recall every memory which bhagwan has given um in the early 1980s i got the opportunity to sing in sundaram the very first time i uh, sang a bhajan in the divine presence is he kamala nayana bhagwa satya sai bhagwa he din janu ke pra he patit pavana sitara ut parti purishwar shri sai ram shri sai ram jay jay ram parti purishwar shri sai ram din janu ke that was my first bhajan along with other few first bhajans or the first trip bhagwan you you are able to see however there was a moment the first experience of singing in front of bhagwan when he comes out for darshan and stands right in front of you and then we you know just swaves around like this and that was the first divine inspiring moment in my life and that was the bhajan naam bhajo hari naam bhajo narayana hari narayana nanda ananda mukunda hari nanda ananda mukunda hari nanda vana sai baba hari so when i'm singing baba hari sai baba swami was just sway baba hari sai baba hari baba hari sai baba swami was swaying i said okay swami i'm st- still studying in in chennai how nice it will be if i can sing for you in your own place for as many days as possible and that was one story which left me to earn for going to prashantanilayam and when i landed in prashantanilayam bhagwan took some time to give permission for me to sing in the sense every time there is a singer entering into prashantanilayam a student uh, he has to wait for permission from bhagwan <clears throat> so i'm narrating the second experience where he gives the opportunity to sing after you know after some time where you keep on going you have to go physically ask swami swami can i sing in the mandir he'll say oh, wait 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 sometimes he'll say or practice chesi padu you practice and then sing then finally one day he said yes go uh, because you know like at that point in time when he came to the hostel he said yeah go sing uh, you know how it happened he said i have seen you somewhere already where so i told swami um, uh, in chennai sundaram oh i know a madras rowdy you are a madras rowdy he said then i got so scared uh, i didn't know what to ask and then finally one of my a uh, co students you know who was studying he said ask for permission to sing then i asked for permission and swami said okay practice chesi padu so i practiced on that day and sang but the experience here is there are various bhajans we got to sing in front of swami however 
what is that we need to learn is what is our primary do duty and what are our secondary duties we as, as soon as become i became a sai devotee i thought i'm going to be singing bhajans all the time and then singing is my primary duty so what exactly happened was the second experience which i'm narrating to you is the first semester was done i was already singing in mandir however when the exam results came swami comes out because we were only 20 students in the masters program and in my class i was we were only two students and we had five professors teaching us mathematics and so we had so much attention uh, but the entire batch itself had only 20 students of masters so swami came out started announcing it as oh uh, neem neeku a ochindi ramkrishna neeku a grade ochindi so he what does he mean you all got a grade he kept listing all the students and kept calling and when yeah, when it came to my turn kumar no pad namaskar for you you are the only one who is an insult to this university because you are the only one who got a b grade in this whole class why did you come here to swami's college did you come here for study or something else don't think singing is your primary duty your parents have spent money and sent you here for study you are the one who got the least grade bringing bad name to the institute you cannot continue in this college if you do not improve by next semester to a grade or o grade which is higher like a plus is o grade in swami's college if you are not able to get a grade or o grade you cannot continue i'll send you back madras rowdy and you can go around moor market and get spoiled you know that moment swami said no pad namaskar he gave pad namaskar to every one of my classmates and he said you stay away and nothing for you and he knows how to drill into your dumb mind as to what he has to say to make it work and also one more thing if you continue like this you can't sing in mandir also so primary duties we should always remember and then when i got the next semester i worked so hard i would not i would talk less in the class i would focus in the uh, class when the teacher is teaching me and prepare well to the exam oriented preparation as well as understanding fully well <clears throat> and so that is how i was able to score o grade which is a plus and the next darshan i mean next semester darshan when he came out he came in search where is s kumar where is s kumar where is s kumar he kept asking for it all the darshan line and then i was sitting in the bhajan hall he came and asked nik o grade ochindi you got o grade swami is very happy take pad namaskar i am proud of you he said and then he gave me the seat for phd program how do you think i would have never imagined in my life to be doing a phd in my life so he channelized my energies transformed my thought process into only having interest in music to interest in everything we do for swami and in that also what is primary what is secondary if but singing for swami is also important but primarily what have you come for what is your role so that was a lesson he drilled into me after doing which i respected swami's words for my own sake why would swami care why should swami care for one corner uh, you know student sitting in one corner so that gave me a life lesson that allowed me to focus better and thanks to swami using my music as my weakness he achieved a strong point to come out 
and that is how true to his name i was able to get into the phd program by his will totally and i have could have never imagined in my life that i would do well in my studies these are the two contrasting experiences where one is an inspiring awakening moment where you go to swami's college where you get just kind of you know uh, squeezed with your ego with your you know with your energies and then channelize to achieve a goal which he considers as a greater offering to him as himself askumar that was so beautiful inspiring what a life lesson and i could well imagine how you were feeling when swami was saying you know all these things to you you know removing certain privileges and blessings but then look what it did to you it sort of catapulted you into more commitment dedication you understood the lesson of why what is more important now that life lesson the primary lesson was learned and then look how he blessed you you know subsequently with your final grade really really wonderful and it it sort of reminds us that swami you know he bakes you he burns you he sends you through the furnace but you come out a little bit more glittering in terms of your devotion and commitment to him which leads me uh, as kumar to the next question i know you were very much involved on, as an instrument in composing the tune for that very beautiful popular divine uh, bhajan humko tum se pyar de kitna can you share yes. a little bit about that experience oh absolutely so uh, so it's what exactly happened was i need to give you a preview to that uh, experience the preview to that is after getting into a phd program you know i felt yes i'm comfortable you know i'm uh, you know i'm able to do this and then i i was uh, you know doing well in uh, because i was doing well in studies as well as doing a lot of music programs and stuff but you know because having learned classical music all classical musicians have this problem see i know more music than you so that was something which was always in my mind i know more music than the other person you know we are all students growing up as teenagers and then we are in a prime youth youth is a very tricky age where we want importance for ourselves and so in a in a more uh, worse way to say it in a comparison with somebody else we want more importance. so that used to be there even during when i was there in putapatti to say the reality so at that point in time so i used to show off whenever there was an opportunity so what is that subtly you know we all learn little bit you know we become little more mature so we know how to subtly show off you got you got what i mean my statement is right so i have grown and i used to sing like this shiva 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 yanara i used to sing sari sani da sani da bani da ba ma da ba ma ga ma pa da ni sani da ba ma ga pa pa shi pa shi ba shi da ye na ra da ga ga ma ga ma ga 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 re su re ga ga so i'll show off using my music knowledge the swara knowledge in so many concerts expecting swami to come and tell me at the end of the program oh my god Yes, Kumar, you sang superb. This is exactly what I am expecting from Bhagwan. You know, in my heart of hearts, once you become comfortable, how many mistakes we do? This is a lesson again. So once I became comfortable in terms of doing my chores in general, I want to show off. So, <coughs> excuse me. So I used to show off using my knowledge wherever possible, and at the end of which, Bhagwan. would come to me when i'm taking pal namaskar he would say why is that your face is so intolerable to watch i am thinking here on the one hand swami you are supposed to be praising me for my knowledge there's nobody else who can sing swaras like me that's what you need to be appreciating you are telling how my face is swami will say you know what 
uh, your face is going in all weird shapes and horrible to watch who will be sitting on the seat and watching you so at that time swami kept on communicating to me saying that the more you think about yourself while singing you are giving an ugly presentation the more the less you think about your own self and start presenting something as an offering you do not know how swami feels so then he came down to i sang a song called kanna indrayitin rama indrayitin in the face only arayitanu in kadumunne sai muga mattum theriyade i sang that song swami came to the stage and appreciated me and told i didn't even expect but i didn't do any swaras no show of knowledge it is just a plain simple vanilla offering of a song in its beautiful meaning and he called all the famous playback singers and showed them see how did my kumar sing so he made me know that it is not the knowledge which matters it is the feel with which you can offer something to bhagwan which forms the basis for anything you offer to bhagwan so that lesson he gave me through this arrogance of music knowledge which i kept showing off and after which i learned and then i was conditioned i was pre qualified when this composition of humko tum se fell on my lap one second <clears throat> excuse me when it came to me on that day the intention behind humko tum se was uh we wanted to compose a song which was uh which was easy for many people to sing so more like a western type of a tune it should have we remembered that much so sailesh shrivastav is another person who composed along with me he composed the hindi portion and then he said sir because i was much senior to all of them so they used to call me sir sir the telugu portion is something which i do not know the meaning can you please compose so when the composition came to me it came for any song to be composed you have to have proper meter in the sense it should fall in beat right hum ko tum se pyar kitna sai tum hi jante so there is a meter okay so when it came telugu portion నీవు లేని మా జీవనం నీరు లేని చేప వేదనం నీకు మాకు ఒకే బంధము అది ఏ ప్రేమ బంధము సో ద లాస్ట్ లైన్ వాజ్ నాట్ సెరింగ్ ఆన్ బీట్ ఐ టోల్డ్ యు నో సైలేష్ ఐ కెన్ కంపోజ్ దిస్ సాంగ్ బట్ ద లాస్ట్ లైన్ విచ్ ఇస్ ది మోస్ట్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ లైన్ వాట్ డస్ దట్ మీన్ నీ ద ఓన్లీ బాండ్ బిట్వీన్ యూ అండ్ మీ ఇస్ ద బాండ్ ఆఫ్ లవ్ దట్ ఈస్ ద స్టేట్మెంట్ so when you have that kind of a statement you don't want to ask for meter you know because it's already composed in a particular way and we have to stick to it that's what i felt so i told them you know what the way we can compose is me kuma ko ke bandhamo we stop and then we sing together like a chorus adi prema bandhamo give a pause hum ko tum se i asked them do you think the whole crowd will be able to sing the whole students thousand students do you think they will be able to sing without a beat because it's a climax of the whole song and climax should go on top ma ko ke bandhamo adi prem bandhamo he said sir this is final that one moment i thought swami 
i could not have gotten this idea but for you because these are all not planned these songs were composed like any other song how many thousands of times swami used to join along with students to sing this song swami will ask for this song swami will go anywhere sing humko tumse so we never even and because this telugu portion is so uh, you know it's like uh, it's that's a best way to go reach somebody you know it's like so much physical though but it's those moments are so precious in our life and that is why i feel this composition fell on my lap because i was i was able to understand swami's uh, message comes to us only when we are selfless and that is what is the message humko tum se you know how much of love we have for you swami and that is what is a blessing we have as kumar that was so beautiful and inspiring but can you now share a little bit about the meaning of the song because you have different languages first of all how many languages are contained in the song and share a little bit about the meaning and then can you sing a bit of it yeah sure um the meaning of the song is swami hum how much of love we have to you only you know okay humko tumse pyar kitna sai tum hi jante you only know swami dilon we only know that you are the heartbeat of us dilon ki dhadkan tum ho sai tum hamare and you are the heart and the breath inside us tum hamare pran ho humko tumse so you are the heart and you are the breath and you will know how much love we have for you okay and then neevu leni ma jeevanam the life without you neevu leni the life without you neevu leni our life the life we have which is without you is like fish out of water so that is why when it say neevule neeru leni chepa vedanam that's why when we have this neevule ni vaachi varanam neerule ni so why did we compose it like the chepa vedanam why did we sing compose it like that if you take a fish out of water it will it will it flutter like it will flutter like that neeruleni chepa vedanam and then we come back your proximity ne sannidhe ma kupinni your proximity is our uh, life needu chupi prana samanam your one look is our life needu chupi prana samanam and then finally neeku ma neeku ma ko swami for you and me there is only one bond neeku ma ko oke bandhamo and that is adiye prema bandhamo humko tumse pyar kitna and then the third language first is hindi second is telugu and now we want everybody to sing that line we love you dear us lord we love you we love you dear us i we love you we love you dear us i we love you as kumar that is so touching brings about a feeling of bliss and happiness 
and pure devotion to Bhagwan. So beautifully you have expressed that. So Eskumar, you have been privileged and blessed through the grace of Bhagwan to have sung for him over a period of 10 years, 1983 to 1993. And whenever we do interviews with the students of Bhagwan who have passed through <laughs> their student years, they've had different experiences. But share with us, what is it like for you as a student, as a singer, as a devotee, expressing your love, your devotion to Bhagwan, and seeing him physically in front of you. You know, this God that is the self-same Rama, self-same Krishna, self-same Christ, self-same Allah, you are there in front and you are singing, you are pouring your heart out. What is that feeling like? Absolutely. Um... That feeling actually is built over decades. Um, initially, when we go near Swami, it's all physical. You know, how much can I go closer to Swami physically? But, you know, there are times he crushes your ego and gives you a lesson where he won't even talk to you for few years. For a couple of years, Swami would not even look at me or talk to me. Those are the years which really make you understand as to what is permanent in life. So, and those moments, he ignores you completely and then finally comes back to you to talk to you about, you know, whatever it is. And that moment, we realize that Bhagwan we need to connect in so many different levels. What are those? Bhagwan himself taught us, you know, I don't have time to talk to you all the time. I have so many devotees. I need to spend time with so many other people. So how do you spend time to feel Swami all the time? Swami himself taught this to me. Swami said, recall every moment that Swami spent with you. <clears throat> Those moments when you can recall, you will start feeling a different vibration and that will show in your action. And that is what, whether it is Swami physically singing in front of him or Swami teaching me various other things like playing a drama a role of Radha. Swami gave me a role of Radha and made me wear costumes, female costumes. And then he taught me the songs he had composed, written himself. He himself wrote and tuned them and then taught those songs. He said every moment of teaching a line, he would teach like this. <clears throat> Niluvani da leni pratuku ni korakani moyudana Krishna. Swami used to teach those songs, and Swami told me whenever you're offline, listen to Swami's voice teaching you, and then you will automatically feel that vibration in whatever you do. So what exactly Swami meant is the kind of feeling if we can make Swami alive in whatever we do. Swami, I have an exam to write today. Please be with me and help me write this exam. Swami, I have a house to build. Please be with me to give me financial support. <clears throat> so such in every act of ours, if we can take Swami along with us, like a friend, Swami said, if you follow me, I may not lead you. 
if you lead, I may not follow you. Be with me and be my friend. That, if we can treat all the time, that Swami is my friend and I am taking Swami with me in every task on a daily basis, whatever we do, that gives me the permanent connection to Swami. Very, very touching and inspiring, uh, S. Kumar. And I know during the course of your stay at Prashanti Nilayam, you would have experienced many birthday celebrations in Parti. In fact, S. Kumar, this interview is going to be aired on the 23rd of November 2021. So it's, going, it's going to be aired on Swami's birthday. And I think it's most appropriate. Can you share a little bit? You would have heard many beautiful birthday messages and guidance and how we should celebrate the birthday of Bhagwan Baba. Share with us from your experience, what are some of the, the lessons, the guidance that Swami has given as to how we should celebrate the birthday of an avatar. Absolutely. We are so many different types of people in this world. So Bhagwan has purposely created each one with a different talent. Some can do excellent service to people. Some are doctors, some are engineers, some are singers, some are actors, some are very good in cooking. How beautifully Swami has given us great roles in our own life. So for this birthday, I would like to narrate one little story of birthday, which happened during 60th birthday. Bhagwan, during 60th birthday, he spent three months reviewing the preparations of 60th birthday because that's world conference, so many people are coming, dramas, music programs, jula program, you know, and then <clears throat> uh, Shanti Vedika was built for the first time and, you know, construction. So what exactly happens on those times is, Swamis, we have to gather all our skills to put together whatever we could offer the best for Swami. That's simple, as simple as that. So, uh, you know, somebody wrote a song, Pavalin uh, Chuparti, is a Jula song. Swami is going to be sitting on a silver Jula for 60th birthday. And there was one Telugu song written for Swami for Jula. And then that song was, uh, you know, those days we had another senior brother by name Sonam who doesn't know anything about Telugu. He doesn't understand anything about Telugu. And he's excellent in composition. He's composed so many bhajans like Mata Maheshwari Tribhuvainaja. So many bhajans. He said, he told me, Kumar, I don't know anything about Telugu. Can you sit with me and explain so that I can tune the song? And we both sat down in front of Swami's picture and composed this Jo 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 So the song goes like this in the first paragraph. I, we finished only composing the first paragraph. We go near Swami. Swami picks up the lyrics, looks into it and starts singing 
exactly the way we have composed. We, me and Sonam were looking at our face, you know, one on one, each other. And then Swami is singing exactly the same way we have composed in that rag. And that made us feel, Swami, any offering we make to you is also your own will. It is just that you have made us, us as an instrument to make this offering, to know the joy of what we do. And so we are thankful to you for having used us as an instrument in the process. So basically, Swami only made us know during all those discourses that in so many forms, that Narayana, Lord Narayana is this inside this body. That Shiva is in this body. That Dattatreya whom you worship is in this body. These are used to be 65th birthday discourse. We were really having goosebumps listening to Swami saying that very Lord has come in Sai and he's celebrating his birthday with us. And what more we can offer as best talent we have towards giving a great prasadam to devotees or great a vibration in terms of the experience which we can share or a great song where uh, devotees can feel the connection to the divine or do so many activities in the background. The key thinking of Swami so that it can be a offering in so many other levels. So a birthday is an offering of ourselves using the skills we have in a selfless manner to Bhagwan. Thank you very much, uh, S. Kumar, for that very divine sharing. <clears throat> you know, when you look at Swami's life, sometimes you begin to wonder about this avatar, the simplicity of his life. He walked barefooted. He wore robes. Sometimes when the robes was cut or had a hole, rather than get a new one, he would let it be repaired. He who had the entire universe at his feet was teaching us such beautiful, simple lessons. Simple living and high thinking. Look at the room in which Swami stayed and slept. It would stifle most of us to live in a room like that. Simple bed. He gave his entire life as Kumar for the benefit and welfare of humanity. I remember listening to an incident where a student was helping him open letters. And he said, this person wants a good daughter for his son. He wants to get a good job. This one wants to have plenty of money. And then Swami paused and his eyes uh, filled with tears. He said, who is asking for me? And sometimes you, you are thrown into a thoughtful, thought-provoking conversation that this Lord, we are always asking from him so many things. But what about him? Who is helping him? Are we asking, Lord, how can I help you fulfill your mission? What part can I play? So rather than dwelling so much on my little selfish desires, <clears throat> to the one who has come to bless the whole of humanity, we ask, for coffee powder, things that you can get in a shop. So it, it sort of moves and tears at your heart. Sometimes when you see him walking back to the mandir, his head is slightly bent. You know, I'll share, you know, a little bit personalized to wonder. I said, Swami, you've given us so much every day's darshan. You give divine discourses, you conduct interviews, you build stadiums, you share so much 
but what about you, Lord? What are we doing to help you in your mission? So sometimes it moves you to tears when you ask those questions. So as Kumar, you know, as we celebrate this birthday of Bhagwan, what is it that we can really give him Correct. that really belongs to us as a birthday gift? Absolutely. Um, Bhagwan, whenever we do, whenever we are leaving the Swami's college, you know, students, Swami, uh, what can I give you? What can I give you? What can we give you, Swami? Uh, can we do this? Can we do it? Swami used to say, you be happy and then you share the happiness to all others in the sense only if we are happy we can let others be happy so the best uh, Swami is to say the best gift you can give it to me is first you be happy and then try to help so many other people to be happy so that is the best gift we can give it to Swami in how many other ways we can do, for example, whenever we know that we can associate with our organization and help not asking for importance, just be in the background and make others grow. So that is what Swami taught us is the best institute prayer for us is Sahana Vavatu, Sahana Bhunaktu, Sahaviryam Karavavahai, Tejasvina Vaditamastuma Vidvishavahai. That is means actually, <clears throat> it only means that come together, live together, learn together, reach together. If we can take a family of people more happy, then we will be in a position to take the whole center to be more happy. And then that is how wherever we go, we play a role which is more of a humility role and own a lot of responsibility by which others can grow. That is the best offering we can do to make Swami happy. Basically, we be happy, make our family happy, and then make our center happy, and then make the world happy. And that is what is the best offering we can give it to Swami. So as Kumar, it leads me to another observation. Mm -hmm. Swami has said also, many of you come to me and ask for petty tinsel and trash. Very few of you have come to ask of me what I have come to give, which is liberation. But this avatar is so full of compassion and indulgent. He <clears throat> says, I give you what you want. So you could want what I have come to give. No other avatar in the history of humanity has been so intimately in contact with his devotees, so blessed are we to have been born in the same time of Swami, to have knowledge of him, to know him, and actually be chosen by him to be contemporaries in his mission. So how important is that? And, and especially this life, this particular life, when the avatar is walking the face of the earth, what should be our mindset in capitalizing on this opportunity? Absolutely. Bhagwan will give us so much initially and that is when we have to start realizing that what is permanent and what is exactly uh, we are really getting into all, are we all the time thinking about ourselves when Swami is going for darshan? Are we thinking about me becoming uh, in the front of a center where I can talk to so many people? No. Meaning we have to graduate at some point in time and then being in the background, we should be enablers, you know, in business term, what we use as enablers, if we can enable everyone to become what Swami wants, <coughs> excuse me, and that will be the best way to really 
make Swami, uh, Swami's avatar more meaningful in through our lives. In the sense, every time we do something, we can pick up an activity where all our inputs are there, all of our energy is there, but we don't ask for any name. And that is what is ultimately Bhagwan expects us to give, be it whether in Puttaparthi, teaching faculty, or uh, you know, being in the administrative block doing the, you know, the work, or being far away from Bhagwan in, a, in another country and still guide all others to feel the joy which Bhagwan has shared with us. And at the same time, grow, make them grow if they're in trouble, help them out, whatever extent possible from our own energy. And that on everyday basis, if we can enable others to be finding a better goal of their own lives, we have really been useful for Swami. Thank you very much, uh, S. Kumar, for that divine sharing. So as we celebrate this birth anniversary of our beloved Lord, can you share, from your perspective, what does Sai Baba mean to you today? One word, Sai Baba, for me, means protection all the time. Because life has got so many things, joy, happiness, petty desires, and fear. So fear is one area which normally we don't address them because when there is a threat of health, when there's a threat of uh, you know pandemic, when there is a threat of the weather, which is like, you know, cyclones and, you know, storms and everything. There are so many things which are happening uh, in the world which are not stable in nature. So at uh, all such point in time, if we can hold on to his name, Sai Ram, it gives us so much more power and protection that will save, give energy and derive so much of joy and peace in so many people's mind. Sai Baba for me is protection in all forms one can think of. As Kumar, you know, Swami has given in his divine messages, as we navigate through life, he has told us that we should practice two things, fear of sin, and morality in the society. So here is S. Kumar, who has spent so many years in a particular environment conducive to spiritual development. Nagar Sankirtan, Darshan, Bhajan, Meditation, Seva, everything is conducive to your spiritual development there. And now in the year 2000, you come to the U.S., and you are now thrown into what we call the business world, where there's every conceivable type of a dharmic behavior. People <laughs> are lying, cheating, greed, unethical business practices, etc. How did you, as a Sai student, against the background of your spiritual foundation, how have you been able to navigate in such a way that the world hasn't gotten into you, but as Swami said, especially the Sai students, that you will have to become agents of transformation. <clears throat> How have you been able to achieve this in your life in the U.S.? Absolutely. This is a very good question. Um, in the year 2000, when I came in here in November, exactly it's been 21 years since I came here to this country. Um, the very first year, within six months of moving into California, dot-com burst happened. Because of which all companies were closing down, 
losing jobs. And I lost my first job in the US within six months of my coming into this country. And that is a heavy blow. You are new to this country. Six months is nothing in this country. And I lost my job. And at that point in time, I had known only one person in, in the sense whom I can go approach Swami. What happened really to me? I don't understand before even I could know what's happening. I lost my job and the whole family is in shambles in the sense it is no, you, next month we cannot pay the rent. The whole family is going to go to the road within a few uh, days from now. And at that point in time, I just, Swami, is this your will that I have to go back to the country? And how does this work? How do I manage? Give me some uh, direction to me as to how I, would, I should proceed. It's total confusion. And at that point in time, uh, you know, I went for a bhajan and then I just, Swami, I have to go back. I'll go back. That's fine. But tell me what I need to do. And then should I go? Should my family alone go away? And I was thinking like that. At that point in time, you know, like there was somebody who offered me to do the following H1. And at the same time, the family could not have survived because the salary and stuff like that. The point is the kind of all these troubles when they come, there were so many other Sai devotees who came and helped me to, for me to stay. And if I had not said the word Sai Ram, they are not known to me at all. Like so many people helped me to stay in this country. And the family had to go to India. And then I found a job where I could survive to continue my job here, to stay here. And that time you realize more that Swami, see, it's all great to have Swami in great times. There are so many who help you during your bad times. I will never be able to forget them in my life. And that is possible because there is a song, you know, Andari Bandhuvaya Badha Chalaramaya Which means there's one Sai Rama Andari Bandhuvaya Mana Sai Ramaya There's only one relative in this whole world and that is Sai Rama who will help you through so many people. You just have to be looking out for his will and take it as is. And then you also be part of that help to somebody else at some other point in time. So that he teaches life is about give and take and trouble and happiness. And that was actually a point in time. Uh, the people from California helped me so much for me to survive the trouble, which has made me know as to how I should prioritize work balance to various other things we do in terms of the business arrangement as to where exactly we have to underplay, where we have to communicate for the good of the business and things like that. I know it's a certain categorical strategies which we learn out of suffering. It's not over enthusiasm to present, we'll get business. Can we deliver what exactly the customer wants instead of me having done PhD and do, giving all the things which I know? No, can you help a customer do solve a problem which can give him $10 more in his life? That's more important than we having an idea potential worth $1,000. So that is what is the reality of business which I learned which has helped me to grow in this country. Thank you very much, uh, S. Kumar. That was very heartfelt and soulful sharing. So at this point in time, 
as Kumar, mm -hmm. you've sung so many beautiful bhajans in the immediate physical presence of Swami. Can you sing one that you would have sung in front of him? One that okay. really resonates with you. There is a bhajan which Swami used to ask me to sing. And uh, there's a picture which I would like to share. Swami, for the first time, when I sang this bhajan, I learned it from Sunam. I, it was new to me. I learned it for the first time and sang it in Purnachandra Auditorium. And in Purnachandra, when he entered, it was, uh, he entered the, the older Purnachandra, which had curtains, the blue color curtain on the Purnachandra, and he used to have a steps on the Purnachandra. And uh, Swami came into the uh, Purnachandra, and I just started singing already. And that bhajan is Kalyana Krishna, Kamaniya Krishna. So that bhajan, I'm singing for the first time. And Bhagwan had his throne in the Purnachandra, a beautiful throne. He could just come, give darshan and go sit on the Purnachandra throne. When he saw me sing this bhajan, <clears throat> Kalyana Krishna, Kamaniya Krishna, Kalyana Krishna, Kamaniya Krishna, Kalinga Mardana Shri Krishna, Kalinga Mardana Shri Krishna, Govardhana Giridhari Murari, Gopi Mana Sanchari, Govardhana Giridhari Murari, Gopi Mana Sanchari, Murari, Gopi Mana Sanchari. Vrindavan ki tulasi mala Vrindavan ki tulasi mala Pitambar dhari murari Pitambar dhari murari Kalyana Krishna, Kamaniya Krishna, Kalinga Madhana, Shri Krishna. That's a bhajan. When I sang, sitting in the first row, sitting right next to Raja Riddhi and all of this, or festival time. So we have bhajans in festival time only in Purnachandra. Swami, instead of going and sitting on the throne, he just came and sat in front of me, on the, almost on the steps, um, just directly face to face. I was able to look at him this close. And I said, Swami, you have a beautiful throne how fortunate I am to look at you through this closeness and then you doing like this and then closing his eyes, he was doing like this and that beauty is not comparable to any other beauty in the world. And that moment is a blessed moment of my life, which I'm ever, ever thankful and with full gratitude to Swami. Very, very beautiful. Oh, the singing, you know, the glory of Krishna. So beautiful, so enlightening. Thank you for sharing, brother. I don't. So, as Kumar, you spent so many years in Prashanti Nilayam. You've had many wonderful <laughs> interactions at different levels. And I know for many, many thousands of devotees all over the world, when Swami gave up that physical form, 
devotees reacted in different and myriad ways. Share with us how did you react initially and how have you now been able to navigate past beyond the physical form to maintain that connection to the divinity within? Swami gives each one of us a skill for us to learn as to what he has come for, which you said. What is that he has asked us to realize so that we can give him through us, through our entire life. What is that? So keeping away all the music and singing, you know, there were so many times Swami would subtly let me know that he knows what I'm thinking in my mind. In Kodaikanal, this happened. I was given the responsibility to serve food for students because I was a senior boy and other younger, uh, you know, younger students were there. I received this opportunity to serve food, which I was happy to do because when all others are closing their eyes and chanting Brahmarpanam, we can look at Swami as to what Swami will eat only at that time. Swami will eat his food when all students are Brahma, Pranam, Brahma, Swami will eat whatever he could because it's offering to God, right? So we could see it. So, so on, a, on a whole stay in Kodai, what exactly happened was I was thinking in my mind, Swami, there's so many days I watched you eat, but is there a time I can sit down to eat? And I was serving a Kumar, put the dishes down, put the vessels down, go sit in the seat and start eating. I was like, Swami, how did you know I was thinking exact that moment physically? So we, we have kind of gotten the greatest opportunity to test this omnipresent machine, omnipresent being, omnipresent love. Omnipresent love is the being of Satya Sai. And we were able to test it out so many times. And then there were times when I would just be sitting and then Swami will come down and tell me, hey, your mother has come. Your father has come. Not only that, after moving to United States, for so many years, I was not able to go back to India because of my visa processing uh, schedules were off towards alumni meet. I used to stay back in, in the US and then during alumni meet, Swami would ask, where is Eskumar? He has not come. Who am I after all? Who am I in this whole world? I have not written any letter, any form. Every time the alumni meet used to come, Swami, I'm really missing myself to be in at your lotus feet. I used to think, Swami will ask Vedanarayan, sir, Eskumar Rale Dente. So when Vedanarayan, sir, came, he used to tell me, Swami has been asking for you, Kumar, you have not been showing up for alumni meet. And then on the other hand, he would tell Gita Ram, oh, Kumar uh, Nadu, you know, he, because we belong to the same center, uh, Sw Swami would ask, and then there is somebody else. Swami asked, "Do you know where Kumar is? Would you know, or would, would I know?" Swami is telling to that boy, "Would you know, or would I know?" He's in Washington D.C. So Swami said that in the Bhajan Hall during an. I said, Swami, it is one thing for us to know you that you are omnipresent. Okay. And then there's another thing for us, for you to think even about people like us who just are insignificant in this whole life. We are nobody. We are nobody in this whole world to be thought of by Bhagwan. And Bhagwan would ask inside the mandir, where is Eskumar? How is he doing? Show me a picture of him. Think, I said, Swami, you have always given me that support. Yes. I am thinking of you. The more we think, what Swami said, right? 
you take one step, I take 100 steps, is so true that even to this moment, if I am talking, I'll always say, Swami, I know you know that I'm talking. Okay? I know you know it. That is enough for me. That is protection for me. That is love, omnipresent love, which is acting as protection for me. And that is the feeling which is actually is permanent, whether we physically there on in Puttaparthi or elsewhere. So even to that extent, when I was leaving Puttaparthi, uh, you know, on the uh, on that day of October 7th, looking at Swami's car, uh, Swami, I know you know me. I know you are you know that I'm leaving. Swami was just on the road. Only me and Swami were there. And that moment, I know. I know that you know that I know. So that is a kind of feeling of perfect handshake of what do you call that? Um, uh, it's a kind of a feeling where he's always with us in our heart. And he has reflected it so many times physically. And he has to reflect that physically to so many other people. So don't keep on asking for me, 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 me. And he has given that omnipresent love being to so many of us. And that is exactly the best blessing of our life in this avatar. And that is something I'm ever thankful for. Yes, Kumar, what a blessing it is just to listen to that story. So beautiful, so beautiful. The, the compassion of Mother Sai that he remembers, he knows. He lets you know that I know that you are there. Wow, what a feeling. Thank you so much for sharing. Actually, that gives us a confirmation that whatever we are going through, if something is going slow, that's his will. If something is going fast, that's also his will. And that is how he makes us realize that whatever we are today is because of him and his grace. So as Kumar, Swami has said that he has come to incarnate the indwelling God in each and every one of us. He says he has come to ignite the spark of divine love in our hearts. He has come to show us the way back to Ananda, that blessed state of experiencing bliss. He has come to make the world a better place by transforming each and every one of us. And one, and if I should quote a particular message from Charles Spen, my beloved, where Swami says, be about my work, my beloved bhaktas. Your breath will carry the scent of the blossoms of heaven. Your example will be that of angels. Your joy will be my joy. What can each one of us do as we celebrate this birth anniversary of Bhagwan? What can each one of us do to create a better society, a more loving society, a more value-based society? To do whatever best we know to the best of abilities without any expectation is actually the action we need to take. Whether it is any type of organization we are with, wherever we are, if we can groom the younger, uh, you know, younger um, devotees of Swami, or why devotees of Swami, even otherwise, wherever we can, if we can be communicating that love and experience the kind of love back from other beings, whether it is human beings or any other levels, Samastha Loka Sukhino Bhavantu Swami has said, right? So if we can communicate that love to everything we do, automatically becomes an offering, which for this birthday and for all the other days to come, we could give that as a gift for Swami. So as Kumar, 
The Sri Satya Sai Global Council West Indies expresses gratitude and appreciation to you for taking the time to share your personal journey to Swami. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Absolute joy and pleasure having this divine interaction with you. As Swami says, not a blade of grass moves and I have not willed it so. It is only by His divine grace. But please, can you sing one bhajan to bring this divine interview to a fitting end? Sure. The only bhajan which Bhagwan sings very often Sai bhajan bina sukh shanti nahi hari naam bina anand nahi prem bhakti bina udhar nahi guru seva bina nirvan nahi sai Bhajan bina sukh shanti nahi Jap dhyan bina samyog nahi Prabhu darsh bina pragyan nahi Sai darsh bina pragyan nahi Daya dharm bina Sat karma nahi Bhagavan bina Koi apna nahi Sai naat bina Paramaat nahi Sai bhajan bina Sukh shanti nahi Sukh shanti nahi, Sukh shanti nahi. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to think of Bhagwan, connect with him, and share all those lovely moments, lessons he shared with me. Thank you very much. May Bhagwan continue to bless and guide you, and may you continue to be a loving instrument in his divine mission. Jai Sai Ram. Sai Ram. <laughs>